Well, welcome back. We've gone from this morning, I've been to Germany and to Finland, and now we're going to hang out with some folks from Turkey. I'd like to welcome Oz Ur and Syed Turkzever, and they're going to be talking about uh, mapping unmapped towns in Turkey by building and enlarging the OpenStreetMap Turkish community. Now, I have to say, the first time I met the Turkish community, OpenStreetMap community, was in 2011. I met it, ran a meetup in uh, in uh, in Istanbul. So very exciting to watch your evolution over the last uh, decade. Can you believe it? Um, so with that, we're going to get this talk started. And don't forget to ask your questions in the chat. And looking forward to uh, hearing from Oz and Sa Saeed and the whole community. Over. Hello. Greetings from Istanbul, Turkey. My name is Oz. I'm working as a mapping officer in a project called GIGA, which initiates by UNICEF and ITU organs of the UN. I'm also working as a community builder in a local NGO called Yaxanar Mapping for Everyone Association. Today I will talk about what we are doing to enrich Turkey's OpenStreetMap data and what strategies we are pursuing to support the growth of OpenStreetMap Turkey community. Before explaining the activities and events that we choose for the goals, I will briefly mention the background on the OpenStreetMap Turkey community and the OpenStreetMap Turkey data. I believe that it will make it more understandable for you to follow the current, current circumstances and why we choose this strategy. After that, I want to explain the program and details of the events that we choose to follow and how it fits the community's needs. According to OpenStreetMap stats, the community has added 1.3 million buildings and more than 200,000 kilometers of highways to the OpenStreetMap since 2018. There are some spikes on all type of data before 2017 and most of them are bulk imports. If you want more details if you want to learn more details about the dataset, bulk imports, and the, and the contributor types, you can check the Mohamed Zia's outstanding thesis called Turkey OpenStreetMap Dataset Special Analysis of Development and Growth Proxies. So here is the building's data and the volume. The spike which marked with red arrow on the bottom right and the increased volume added data around the spike related to crowdsourcing of non-camp refugee data through OpenStreetMap project were carried out, carried out by Yartizaner and supported and funded by humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. And if you have noticed, a stable volume increase appears in all three types of data after 2018. So the community has an average of 35 to 40 active mappers daily and you can see that the instant increases on the right statistic can be explained by the high number of attended participants or the mapathons organized in disaster activations. And here are the stereotypes of the contributors in the community. It consists of participants such as hobby cartographers, academics, local governments, university student clubs, and, and local NGOs. In addition, another group that makes a significant contribution to Turkey's data is summer tourists. There is a section in the same thesis which I mentioned before that reveals the relationship between tourism, tourism activities in Turkey and the increasing contribution to OpenStreetMap data in, in Turkey during that season. It's, it's really interesting. So members of the OpenStreetMap Turkey community discussed the language barrier issue and asked the artisan to take initiative many times in the community's communication mediums. According to EF English Proficiency Index, Turkey ranked 69th out of 100 countries. The lack of having OpenStreetMap documentation in Turkish is one of the biggest obstacles to growth of a mapping community in Turkey. And in, 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 in sufficient Turkish OpenStreetMap documentation negatively affects participants at, at all levels. 
based on my experience so far, I can easily say that it causes of a it causes a lack of of technical knowledge about OpenStreetMap data structure among experienced mappers, even if they contribute an outstanding or or enormous amount, they can cause a decrease in data quality. From a newcomer's point of view, it significantly reduces learning speed and, and motivation. In order, to tackle, in order to tackle this problem, Yartzener and Youth Season NGOs are teamed up and kicked off the open source volunteering program. The main goal of this program is building and enlarging the OpenStreetMap Turkey community and the three objectives are to train volunteers to get to know more about OpenStreetMap, to translate OpenStreetMap related documentation and to map unmapped towns in Turkey. We started the program by creating documentation and this phase was supported by Hot Community Impact Microgrant program. So most of the OpenStreetMap related tools and documents are already in Transifex, which is a localization tool. I mean, I mean these this OpenStreetMap related tools are Hot Task Manager, ID Editor, Vespucci, UMAP, LearnOSM and ETC. But I guess only JASM is not in Transifex, it's on launch launchpad.net. And therefore, it made sense to us start a, started from a Transifex workshop and we, we decided to arrange a workshop for the usage of this tool. And you can find one of our talk, talks in, in HOT's YouTube channel about the tool and the key usage tips about it. So you can see the translation activity of the ID editor in the slides. The, the tool helps to track of contribution of teams or of an, of, of, of an each individual. There is also a glossary in it to keep the translation standard. It is also important to track the motivation and contribution of the team. We follow it with the weekly coordination meetings and we continue to organize workshops. But this time, this time the workshops were about the tools that we translated. In this way, we enabled the participants to learn the technical terminology better. This, this approach also helped us in the validation phase of the translated scripts. And, and I can say, in, in addition, this approach also helped us to keep the motivation of the participants high because they had new mapping skills. One of the critical things we learned was that we couldn't force the volunteer team just to translate or just to map. After realizing it, we decided to organize more diverse events such as experience shared talks with international committee members or fun quizzes. We hosted the people who contribute the most to, to the OpenStreetMap Turkey data and people from OpenStreetMap Africa communities in the talks. Those events allowed the volunteers become more familiar with the OpenStreetMap culture and become more integrated into the community. So we can call the work so far as the first phase of the program. Our, our next goal was and still is mapping the unmapped settlements in Turkey. We created a maplet challenge with 10,295 tasks with the help of unmapped places of OpenStreetMap project of Pascal Nace. So we already mapped nearly 23% of the challenge and, and it focuses on missing roads in those towns. And we also desire to enrich and renew the Turkey Highway Classification OpenStreetMap Wiki page. I believe it, it will be really helpful to new mappers to decide which classification is more, more right. And you can see here are the boundaries of the chain sets. We, we, we really want to continue in this way and 
If you have any suggestions for us, please don't hesitate to share. And here is my email address. Here is the map that link of the challenge. Thank you for listening. Have a good conference. Well, thanks, Oz and Sad. I'm really just glad to hear what's happening at OpenStreetMap in Turkey. Um, there are no questions in the chat yet, so I thought I'd, I'd start off with, um, you've been involved in OpenStreetMap for quite a while, both of you, right? How long have you been involved in OpenStreetMap, Oz? Uh, I guess I involved in 2017. Wonderful. <laughs> In my case, I started to contribute OSM since 2013, but actively 2015, I must say. Right. And um, uh, in the I, search of open data in our local place. So when I was writing my uh, bachelor thesis, I like issue to access governmental data. So I find it out like OSM is up there. So I see like there is a lack of data there. So I completed my first university campus back in 2013, 14. Then after like, right. Uh, became like fan of the project. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think that uh, time teaches, right? And so I was wrong. It was 2012 that I came to meet. I met Ken, and I, there was, I think, about seven or eight other people who had been involved in OpenStreetMap in 2012 in the fall. So it just really, uh, no, April 2012. It was just very exciting to meet them. So you've really, um, you know, with with the investment that's happened, and also thinking about who your community is, you've had a lot of lessons. So um, maybe you can just, you talked a little bit in your talk about the multiple languages, the fact that OpenStreetMap by its very nature, the documentation is not automatically in Turkish. So what would you want from the community to help get things, like obviously you're doing things in Turkey, but, and you're working with TransFX, what are the other things that we can do as OpenStreetMap to help reach those languages? Actually, I can say that uh, our, our biggest dream about the documentation in, in, in OpenStreetMap is Wikipedia, but it's kind of big, big work. So actually, we are searching for fun for full-time translators because mm -hmm. I I don't think that it's it, it can can translate it with volunteer effort, mm -hmm. or maybe it will be. It will be better to translate whole wiki page. Right, right. And I think it's really complex. Like, it, if we were to translate the whole wiki site, right, that's a whole question, right? And then, how do you do that with communities or volunteers and people need to eat? Uh, let's be super clear. <laughs> like, sometimes that's really heavy lifting. So, there's this tension between volunteering and that. But the third option is, is machine learning, right? Or, or trying that out. And so, is that something that you've thought about? Like, how do you? How can you get things automatically translated and then people correct it? Uh, we never like use this approach because even like Google Translate doesn't really work properly when it comes to uh, translating to Turkish. Uh, the way like the Turkish language, it's uh, completely different. It's like, um, mm -hmm. it's, it uses like suffixes to change the verbs and everything. So mm -hmm. it's a bit complicated, uh, but in short term, we are also like in touch with like professional translator uh, they are also like voluntarily helping us mm -hmm. and uh, in the next stage we are really aiming of like translating immediately learn osm uh web page mm -hmm. after like josm then uh, wiki page we will need like more more restores and founds uh, for the future but immediately we want to translate learn osm as soon as possible because this right. is the first place where the new covers are um, using as a source all right so for those people who are thinking in in their constituencies maybe not in turkey what i heard was a little bit of a list the first thing you need to translate is learn osm second thing is the tools so id and jossam whatever right like those need to be translated and the third one is that bigger thing about like how do we get the the corpus of knowledge translated um i think that's core now have you worked with universities at all in terms of translation no <laughs> Uh, currently, we are getting support from a local NGO, uh, which has like young volunteers, uh, which mm -hmm. I'm the co-founder of uh, this NGO. Mm -hmm. So we are getting most of the volunteers from there. But 
unfortunately, their background is not really uh, map related. So it takes mm -hmm. a long time to invest okay. and educate them to make family with the OSM concept. Then after they can be really uh, contribute the project and for the translation. Uh, we have been like get in touch with universities and university clubs, uh, also like encouraging people to start like youth members chapter uh, here in Turkey. We have only one in ITU. Right. So I feel like there is a huge potential uh, from the like mapping related uh, departments to uh, become like volunteers for translation and also like uh, contributing to them. Yeah. I think that's a really good idea that, you know, youth mappers chapters can help. And certainly you have some ha have each of you who are passionate who are working on it. Um, so in your communities, you talked about the, 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 the way that you've worked this year. And obviously, I saw a screenshot a shot of, of you working on Zoom, I think. So um, when you're working, you're working across many different constituencies across Turkey. Turkey is huge, right? I mean, there's 18 million people in Istanbul alone, right? Is that correct? Out there yeah so that's a large large population lots of vulnerabilities and risks so um i guess my first question about the community is, is how, how diverse is it um meaning are women involved i think i saw some women in the pictures but just help me out here so how how how, how are you in terms of gender balance for the first phase i actually say they they all were women mm -hmm. uh, and they are still contributing. They are they are translating weekly OSM, weekly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, so you 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 know the statistic about the second phase. For, yeah, for the first phase, like it's six, six uh, seventy percent uh, were women mm -hmm. in translation, map editing, and then mapping at we have like more uh, male dominant uh, community uh, for the second volume for doing part. As a picture, we have around 35 active uh, awesome Unfortunately, most of them are men. So this project also helps welcoming uh, women mappers, uh, like as a translator in initially, and then make the, making them familiar with OSM concept. Then after they can also contribute OSM. Uh, so this is definitely a great step also coming uh, women members in our community, not very common in my opinion. Um, I'm sorry, Saeed, your, your sound is cutting out just a little bit, but I think what I heard is there's kind of a two-stage program. You're certainly cognitive and you're working very hard to be inclusive, which is fantastic. In addition to that, um, you're thinking about how to partner with youth mappers, and they have some really great practices around engaging people, um, you know, just different genders and young people, right? So I think that's a really good tactic. So with the programs that you're working on, how do you sustain across all the different projects that come through Turkey? Right, because there's been multiple investments to be able to support that. So, how does the Open Street Map? Um, what's how does the Open Street Map Turkey community work with all these different partners? Like, what are some of the lessons you've had from trying to it, up, improve the community and help support it, but working across all these partners and projects? What are some of the lessons that you've had? So, how do you work with uh, partners? Do you want to take this? Uh, yeah, we're like. Uh, strongly cooperating with uh, human trade and open street map team. Then, uh, as a Yerchi Zenner, we apply like micro grants under uh, Hot Open Street Map team organization. Then, also, we apply for OSM Foundation micro grant, which, was, mm -hmm. uh, which wasn't which was approved, but still, like, uh, we are like uh, preparation and then still, like, good effort to get this micro grant as, as mm -hmm. well as. We are uh, getting in touch with like local authorities and governmental bodies uh, to invite them to start using OSM mm -hmm. and the share data with us. And then also we are willing to show them like how OSM can really uh, empower their tools and their uh, mapping efforts. And because mm -hmm. like there is a decentralization of data as other countries. Um, so everyone is like collecting their own data. So with OSM, we right. believe that we can centralize this data and then save um, like more sources and then use the sources for uh, having a better OSM in the long term. Mm -hmm. uh, but the cooperation mostly um, work like in the center, there is a Yachizener and Yachizener organization um, cooperate with a different organization. Uh, so this is mostly like very, 
uh, one direction and we are convincing, trying to convince the other authority to uh, partner up with us. Uh, yeah, I hope like in long term, there will be uh, more organization will be reaching out us and then want to uh, use uh, OpenStreetMap. And there was a nice uh, sign for this uh, recently for the uh, health ministry was using OSM as a base map on their uh, vaccination program. So when I saw this, like, yes, like they're discovering. So we need to make ourselves like more visible uh, on governmental level and then trying to reach them out. And then, I mean, if they're using also, we can invite them to improve this data uh, for better policy making and for better uh, decision making. Mm -hmm. So we, we have a hope and then seeing like communities growing is very exciting. And for now, like we have 35 active members, but I believe uh, this will increase by end of this year uh, because we make like those um, editors in our like local language. And then there is a kind of a trend that uh, like students are reaching out uh, more to our organization and OSM community. Uh, this keeps us like motivated and then uh, stay working on it. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's always that hard part about like, how do you keep young people excited and get them involved but at the same time deal with the bureaucracy and the negotiation of open data can be helpful and finding those ins like you just said in terms of health um, um, POIs this actually was brought up this morning during a chat I had with uh, Yogesh who's from India who was talking about this in Chennai that um, health site POIs um, adding those to the map actually helped the conversation, right? And so obviously it's being relevant with what's what's basically going on in our world right now. We're all very concerned about the ongoing COVID emergency. And so if we can solve a problem with communities, for communities, that's really essential. So you mentioned the open data community, okay? So I guess what I'd like to know is how does OpenStreetMap in Turkey relate to other open organizations or people who've been working on it. And you did mention, uh, yes, yes, sir. What is it called? Your sir, the, the, the organization. Yeah, it's done. I, I, have, I have the sticker on my laptop. <laughs> you guys gave it to me. <laughs> so I'm like walking around the world with this advertisement for you. But so how do you work awesome. with uh, it? My pleasure. So uh, no, truly, like I'm a fan of all communities doing good work. So it's hard, right? So how do you work with, um, other open communities in Turkey, and again, I know it's very complex sometimes. But how do you how do you collaborate, and how do you how do you learn from each other? Oh, do you want to take it? Maybe we can give an example of uh, Wikimedia Corporation. Wikimedia, yes. um, so we have strong cooperation with Wikimedia Turkey. So they are uh, also like um, mappers because they know like cross sourcing, cross sourcing culture and open data culture. And most of the contributors of Wikimedia, they also most likely contributing OpenStreetMap. Also, one of the active uh, Wikimedia contributor is also in our, uh, you know, execution board, and uh, he's sharing his uh, experience and skills with us. How they tackle all the problem uh, to uh, add like more data and bring to Wik Wikipedia Turkey and all other uh, Wiki projects. So we are also getting good uh, know-how from him. Uh, as well as like we have joined uh, event of Creative Commons uh, this year, so that was also gave us more visibility, and then um, we got like more people are getting curious about OSM, and uh, so that was also a great uh, step. Uh, also, I was like joining International uh, GIS Day as a speaker in Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, and then trying to uh, make OSM more visible in that conversation. Uh, we got also really good feedback. Uh, they have their open uh, data platform, unfortunately, which is not very compliant with uh, OSM license. But we are still like discussion how we can uh, bring their data to OSM and then enrich at least for Istanbul's data. Um, we see like there is uh, things are going on, but these are main uh, partners we are operating. I remember uh, also I had a meeting with uh, Ministry of uh, Environment and Construction uh, some some months ago. They are discovering uh, how OSM can be useful for them because we had also like some legal issues in terms of OSM. Uh, there was mm -hmm. um, a recently unknown. Uh, legislation that uh, 
contributing OSM might be a problem for Turkish mappers. So we are kind of meditating this uh, situation and then uh, trying to show how other countries are using OSM for their benefits and how uh, Turkish uh, government and uh, ministries can also use it. Uh, yeah, these are like main actors who we are mostly cooperating. Uh, so how OSM Turkey is structured? So OSM Turkey is an informal group where there is no any uh, formal structure. And Yerçi Zengar is an uh, official non-governmental organization, mm -hmm. which is also part of OSM Turkey communities. Uh, uh, but like OSM Turkey is the main umbrella, which is informal and everyone is like, uh, welcome there. And yet yeah, there is an NGO uh, which makes OSM community growing as a part of um, OSM Turkey. You know, are you keeping track of all the different, um, like when you just, in just, just talking with you for the last 20 minutes or so, you've done a lot of work in terms of um, who you partner with, where you might go for the future, but also um, playing the hustle of like within open communities, but also trying to be relevant with governments. Um, many, many communities um, are having the same question about how do you work within official systems, but also in an organic kind of open stream app way. Um, so what are your next steps in terms of fostering the community in open stream apps? Of course, I, I really applaud you for getting things into local languages. I think that's super important. Um, I know myself uh, in my workplace, we've been working very hard to make sure that things are in multiple languages. Um, and, you know, it's not easy because people don't prioritize it. So that's one, and that's something for OpenStreetMap. But what else can the OpenStreetMap community do in general to support um, your community? It's a hard question. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's not where you are, like we are chatting like international OSM committees to uh, bring like how they're approaching, especially like when they're approaching gov governments and what's their tactics and strategies. Mm -hmm. And in order to like get the strategies and we are uh, chatting with like OSM communities and their like list of organization we are planning to reach out and uh, right. get their tactics. Uh, and then learn their experience. So there is one in the list, OSM UK which they have shown like great uh, cooperation from the ordinary survey. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the uh, idle example for us. And then uh, these are one of the uh, top lists uh, to be reached out. Mm -hmm. And we are welcome any of uh, such experience, how you cooperate with like governmental organizations and then how you mm -hmm. convince them to uh, use more open data and then open their data. So this is uh, one of the needs uh, and then Second part of um, thing which we bring, so we have like some bad data on OSM Turkey map, and this will be like our next step to analyzing uh, how much bad data we have on our map mm -hmm. and how we can start to fix them. So this is we are working on it at the moment. So if is there any like global community who start like from scratch and then finding out like bad data and then fixing it and then putting a better data on the top of it. Uh, this experience uh, can be also welcome and they can reach me out and they can reach uh, O's and also Yachis in there. So yeah. these are like two, two main um, problems or two main uh, projects we are working on. Uh, mm -hmm. This runs separately. So we want to do this as a parallel. Uh, yeah, these are like topic which we would like to get some help and definitely know-how and then uh, offering tools uh, maybe we're not familiar with uh, can mm -hmm. be like awesome for us and then we can uh, diminish the time uh, we are spending for the planning and exploring uh, to solve this uh, two main issue. Yeah. So um, I guess are you part of the, the, the local communities and chapter working group yet? So OpenStreetMap Foundation has this group. And so this is where this is where the people who have chapters and who've done what you've been doing are, are hanging out, right? And so, um, you know, having a mentor and people from different countries, I think if you're not part of that list, um, definitely they could be your allies. And I would say this because there's, there's no shortage of documentation out there in terms of how to talk to governments about open data. Um, it's just a matter of whether it works in Turkey or not, and nobody would know but you, right? And um, there's also, um, I don't know, I'm not sure, 
sure if you're familiar, but there's something called inner source. Um, so there's like open source organizations or whatever, but inner source, this community is really interesting um, because they, they think about how do you, t how do you help companies just hang, hang, follow me for a second. How do you help companies who don't want to use open source, learn how to work openly and then get towards open source. And so they have a course online for how to, the tactics around it. So it's about behavior change and getting buy-in. And that's what you're doing right now is you're trying to get buy-in from your government. So I think you need to talk to your open data friends, but also your inner source friends. And so I'll drop the link in um, into the chat here for you. Um, I think that's really important. And then also talking to the local working group, um, local chapter working group for some allies. But what would you, um, what are your next steps in the next year? It's been a really hard year to try and develop a community when we're not allowed to be together, right? And so what are your kind of, we only have about four more minutes or so, so I hope that's okay, but um, what are your next steps that you need help with or that you're looking forward to? So maybe what you're looking forward to, over. Actually, I can say that the head of the artisan is already in, in, in communication with local chapters working group. Um, Said, you want to say about the? Yeah, for the upcoming, um, let's say by end of the this year. So we are aiming to complete this Amnap Towns project, which we reach like around two thousand uh, Amnap cities mapped uh, just for the road network. Second stage will be like mapping building of these towns because uh, we don't know like how many people are living uh, in these areas. So there is no data at all uh, for that project. We also we are planning to use uh, Facebook's population data uh, to nice. understand if uh, people are living there and we're going to prioritize uh, those areas where there is a population. And also I mentioned that uh, meantime, we are staying in touch with the government uh, mm -hmm. by using our personal con uh, co contacts and then trying to reach out like uh, decision makers to, uh, to show that there is a potential for RSM and as well as like, uh, for the 2022, we want to focus on to clean up uh, OSM data, which there are like a lot of beta, beta, bad data. So this will be like a uh, thing for the next year. So have you thought about connecting with Martin about Map Roulette? Because it might be interesting to clean up data with Map Roulette. I don't know, just an idea. I'm just trying to think about fun. I could be completely wrong, Syed. I just gave you a new project. Sorry no, about that. No, absolutely. <laughs> No, absolutely. MapRoulette is an amazing tool. I mean, personally, I love it, and I use pretty pretty much a lot. And we also use uh, MapRoulette for mapping and map uh, towns. Uh, right. I see, like, uh, it's a great tool uh, for cleaning up the data, uh, mm -hmm. so we can use a bunch of other combination with MapRoulette, like JOSM QA tool, mm -hmm. and then plus uh, Osmos for detecting bad data, then after, like, exporting this data, and then use MapRoulette to coordinate our team mm -hmm. and this will need like more advanced method to fix data so for now like we are training people and then trying to make them having a certain level mm -hmm. and they can understand like what is the data for OSM and uh, what the convention uh, we, we get to we get to use to map uh, street and you know like some other uh, local tags mm -hmm. and in the second stage definitely like using our tasking manager or similar to like our own fork for tasking manager uh, could be like great great tool for cleaning our um, OSM data in Turkey. Great, great suggestion. I mean, we are yeah. staying in touch with Martin and then- Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. always helpful and uh, responsive, yeah. Yeah, I know. I think uh, there's lots of people who care, who want to help um, communities around the world. I think that's what's really powerful, powerful about OpenStreetMap. So closing comments from Oz, anything that we forgot to talk about? No. You're just going to share pictures from beautiful Antalya. I'm just so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I just want to close uh, this uh, talk with like one invite. So if there are any communities who are curious about like what's our structure and how we start this project, because it was kind of challenging to convert uh, Java objects to GeoJSON and create a MapRoulette project. So right. for that reason, like we create, we create like uh, GeoJSON of all world, all Amnap towns uh, in the world. And I share like on GTAP, on my GTAP, so I can uh, link to here. And we are also very thankful to Pascal Knights for making this great tools. 
-hmm. and we are thankful to all community to share all experience with us so it's uh going well and we are really excited and helpful for the future wonderful well just my my hats off to uh, the osm turkey community i look forward to always getting the check-in and i didn't realize that i was that I, I knew who was speaking today but i didn't realize that i actually get like an almost 10 year update on how the community is doing so thank you so much for sharing and also for thinking about how OpenStreetMap can help your community and then how you can help them and i think that's really positive really positive way to end so with that i am going to close off the session with a big thank you for uh letting me drill you with questions without telling you that I was going to drill you with questions, but I really enjoyed talking with you both. Thank you for Thank you, Peter. It was nice. Nice talk to you. And thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a good rest of your state of your map. Bye. Bye. Ciao.